The Ukrainian President Zelensky is set to address, as we've been hearing, the UN Security Council. Uh, we reckon in the next 30 minutes or so, he has said that Russian forces are trying to hide traces of war crimes. He has also argued that more than 300 people were tortured and killed in Bucha, claims which Russia continues to deny. It comes as the Ministry of Defence says that Ukrainian forces have retaken key areas in the north of Ukraine, but as we're hearing there in the news bulletins, concerns now that those Russian forces will redirect themselves to eastern Ukraine, to the Donbass region, uh, with intensive fighting expected in the weeks, maybe months to come. Well, let's get more on this. Let's bring in the Labour MP, Graham Stringer, who sits on the Foreign Affairs Select Committee and joins us down the line. Uh, Graham, uh, as always, very good afternoon uh, to you. Uh, first of all, on this issue of a war crime, uh, President Biden in America has called it a war crime, and President Putin a war criminal. The EU today have increased their sanctions on Russia. Should Britain follow suits? Yes. I, th I don't think there's very much doubt from the evidence we've seen in television pictures and the actually unprovoked attack on Ukraine itself uh, is, is a war crime. And we ought to be doing as much as we possibly can to help President uh, Zelensky and the people of Ukraine. I mean, it's an appalling uh, situation. I think we need to increase uh, the sophisticated, sophistication of weapons that we're sending to uh, Ukraine. We need to sanction Russia uh, more severely than they're being uh, sanctioned at the present time. We need to reduce the amount of oil and gas that is being purchased in the West uh, from, from oil so that we put as much pressure as we can on Russia. Does that mean, for example, sending tanks, which has been talked about uh, recently? Should the United States look again at, at those fighter jets? I don't know if it means sending tanks, uh, as I, I, I'm not expert in what would be most helpful uh, for the Ukrainians at the moment. One of the things that have to be avoided is direct conflict uh, between NATO and Western forces and the Russians. However awful it is in Ukraine, it would be much worse if we took steps towards a nuclear confrontation. So I think we have to give as much direct help with the weapons and equipment that the Ukrainians can use effectively to push the Russians back out of uh, Ukraine at the present time. I don't think, although I'm not totally confident in this view, that that means uh, planes. Uh, but whatever will we work, the more sophisticated anti-tank uh, weapons, uh, weapons that could sink uh, the Russian fleet that is uh, stood off uh, Odessa at the moment. I think those are things that we could usefully send. Just in regards to uh, Vladimir Putin being accused as a war criminal and indeed many of his generals in charge of all of this, I mean, this is going to be an incredibly difficult process if we want to see any form of justice brought about if President Putin remains in power. In fact, it's, it, it's nigh impossible, many would suggest. Is there anything else that can be done, you reckon, in, in the slightly shorter to medium term to try and bring some justice to the people who've carried out these heinous crimes? I think you're absolutely right. Nobody is going to go and walk into the Kremlin uh, and arrest Putin and say, we're off to The Hague uh, to try you now. That's, that's not going to happen. The only way he is going to be brought to justice if, if, is if the people around him uh, carry out a coup, basically. And then it may be possible uh, to bring him uh, to justice. One hopes that when the people around him see the damage that he has brought on uh, Russia and his own uh, troops, as well as uh, the Russian economy, that they will do uh, something like that. I don't uh, think in terms of justice against Putin, there is anything more that can be done in kind. We can do more of what we're doing, stronger sanctions, uh, doing deals with countries that haven't got perfect human rights records, but they're not uh, causing the devastation that Russia is causing and getting better oil and gas deals off those countries so that 
those European countries in particular that are dependent on Russian gas have another source of, uh, uh, of gas and oil. I also think, and I think the government's got this right, that we ought to be exploiting our own gas and oil under the North Sea and gas uh, under our feet here in the northwest of England. So, so you, would, you would back, and we're going to hear from the government, aren't we, uh, later on this week, in terms of his energy strategy, you would back uh, fracking, for example? I think when we've gas, got gas under our feet here and we are importing gas from Qatar, uh, it is better, uh, both in terms of the amount of carbon dioxide produced and our economy, uh, in, in terms of creating jobs, if we use our own resources rather than... Um, importing it, it gives us energy security as well as being a, a more effective way of doing it. And just very finally, conflicts nearly always come to an end, don't they? If one kind of side wins outright, that seems pretty unlikely in these circumstances. Um, or there is a compromise deal. Do you think if uh, Ukraine loses the Donbass region and maybe that long land corridor uh, down to Crimea, but then goes for peace. That that's an acceptable position that Ukraine uh, potentially may have to cede land to bring this conflict to an end. This, I, I'm genuinely not trying to avoid answering the question, but I think that is for the Ukrainians to decide. I think I did an interview with you some weeks ago where I said just that there will have to be a negotiated uh, settlement to this. But I think the more people that the Russians have killed, the more uh, death and destruction they have brought on Ukraine, I think it makes that negotiated settlement much more difficult uh, for President Zelensky and the people around him to accept that they will concede something. So I, while I've always believed that there, there had to be a negotiated settlement, I think the, the violence and the war crimes makes that much less likely now. So it's, it's for the Ukrainians to decide that.